So throughout the last tutorials, we already created basic movement, slope movement, sprinting and crouching. And today I'm going to show you how to make your player slide in any direction, as well as how to slide down slopes and build up speed while doing so. Now for the base movement, I'm going to use the script we created before. And I would recommend you to do the same, but you can use your own code if you want to. So create a new script called sliding and let's start with the variables. First, you'll need a reference to the orientation, which is just an empty game object that keeps track of where the player is looking. And also a transform for the player object and a reference to your rigid body. Next, you're going to need a few floats for the maximum time you're allowed to slide, the slide force and a timer to check how long you've been sliding already. And since we're going to shrink the player down while sliding, you'll also need floats for your slide Y scale and start Y scale. And of course you need to define a key code for the slide key, as well as two floats for the horizontal and vertical keyboard inputs. And last but not least, a bool to check if you're currently sliding. Now in void start, just get the rigid body component and save the Y scale of your player for later. And for this sliding ability, you're going to need two functions to start and stop the slide, as well as a function to handle the sliding movement. Now in Void Update, you can use Unity's basic input system to quickly get your keyboard inputs. And by the way, horizontal means the A and D keys, whereas vertical means W and S. And now to start the slide, just check if you're pressing the slide key and also you need to be pressing at least one of the four movement keys and if this is all true, you can call the start slide function. To stop sliding again, just check if you release the slide key and if you're currently sliding. Now in the start slide function, just set sliding to true and you want to shrink your player down by changing the local scale of your player object. Just make sure to only change the Y scale while leaving the X and Z scale as they are. And as I explained in the crouching tutorial, after shrinking your player down, you're floating in the air a bit. So make sure to apply a bit of downward force to quickly push your player to the ground again. And also you want to reset the slide timer. Now open fixed update and while you're sliding, make sure to call the sliding movement function. And inside this function, we're now going to apply the sliding force. But first, let's calculate the input direction. For this, just use the forward direction of the player multiplied with your vertical input plus the right direction of your player multiplied with your horizontal input. This way you can slide in all directions depending on which keys you're pressing. Now to apply force in the calculated direction, just use rigidbody.addForce, use the direction.normalized times your slide force and force mode.force. Also, while sliding, you want to count down your slide timer and as soon as it reaches zero, call the stop slide function. In there, just set sliding to false again and also make sure that the player scale is back to normal. Now you can head back to Unity, add the sliding script to your player and set the values to something like this. It seems to work, except there's one problem. The player movement script confuses sliding and crouching because they're both using the same input key. So I would recommend you to change the crouch key code to C. And that's it, you're now able to slide into any direction you want. But there's another thing a bit buggy at the moment, which is sliding down slopes. As you can see, you do this weird bumping movement. Now to fix this, we're going to use the same code as in the slope movement tutorial, so if you haven't done so yet, I would recommend watching it first. So open up your player movement script and basically we're going to use the onSlope and getSlopeMovementDirection functions for our sliding ability, since it doesn't make sense to code them again. For this, you need to make them both public and you also want to change this one a bit. Now you can input any direction you want. 
But now that you changed it, don't forget to fix this problem in your move player function. Now back in your sliding script, you want to put the normal sliding code into an if statement and this will only be executed when the player is not on a slope or moving upwards. In any other case, when the player is on a slope and moving downwards, you want to apply the force in the slope movement direction. Notice that I'm not counting down the timer anymore. This way you will be able to slide down slopes for as long as you want. So head back to Unity, hit play and you can now slide down slopes. Now as promised, I'll also show you how you can build up speed over time, which is a popular mechanic that games like Carlson use. This can be combined with something like bounce pads, which is quite fun. So for this to work, we will need to change a few things in our player movement script. First, add new floats for your desired move speed, last desired move speed and slide speed. Then add a bool called sliding and add a sliding state to your state machine. And you can implement this new state just like you did with the others. Now if the player is on a slope and moving downwards, you want to set the desired move speed to your slide speed. In any other case, just set it to your sprint speed. Now I'm also going to change all of the other move speed variables to desired move speed instead. The reason for this is that we're now implementing momentum into our game. So we need to handle our speed limitations differently. For example, if the player builds up a speed of 30 on a slope and then hits the ground, you don't want the speed to instantly drop to 10. Instead, it should slowly decrease. For this, we're going to use math.lerp inside of this simple coroutine. If you've never worked with math.lerp before, just look it up in the Unity documentation. But basically, this code is just changing the move speed variable to your desired move speed over time. Now all that's left to do is save the last desired move speed at the end of the state handler. And then you want to check if the difference of the desired move speed to the last desired move speed is greater than 4. If so, start a coroutine. If not, just set the value directly. Now I know this looks confusing, but it's quite simple. If you're changing from walking to sprinting, the speed difference is only 3. Therefore, the speed changes instantly. But if you build up a speed of let's say 30 and you're changing to sprinting, the difference is 20, which is greater than 4, which means the speed will now slowly decrease. This way you have it both. On one side you can quickly change between sprinting and walking and on the other side you slowly change between going really fast and really slow. In other words, you're able to keep your momentum. Now just quickly open your sliding script and instead of the private bool, you now want to reference the sliding bool of your player movement script. If you now set your slide speed to something like 30 and hit play, you see that everything is working. And you keep your speed for a while after landing. Now let me just show you one last thing. If you add these two floats and change the coroutine to this, you now build up more speed depending on how steep the slope is. Also, here you have all of the values I use. And remember, as always, you can download the entire project file totally for free on my Discord server. This way, you'll see exactly how I set everything up. But now, thank you so much for watching. Leave your questions in the comments. And if this video has helped you in any way, make sure to leave a like in return. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tutorials. See you next time.